Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome to Dirty Bomb. And that's not a euphemism, that is actually the name of the game. Now, th what this is, is a free-to-play first-person shooter. And uh, I recently got back into this game uh, because I saw a couple of tweets about it and I thought, well, why not have a look at it and see what's changed. Well, not a lot has changed, but then again, it was actually a pretty enjoyable game in its own right anyway. Uh, right, so first things first, let's just have a look at the free-to-play side of things. So, what this game has in it, let's have a look here in the barracks, I believe, here. Right, so these are all the characters, and the ones with the little clocks underneath them, they're on rotation right now. So these are the ones you can play for free. These are the ones that I've unlocked already, so I've got Fragger over here. And they all have special abilities, so all of these play sort of like uh, classes. They all have different amounts of health, they run at different speeds, and they have a special ability. So Fragger, his ability is to throw frag grenades, as the name suggests. Nader has a, a sort of uh, grenade launcher, which uh, explodes on contacts or after, you know, a time period. And one of my personal favourites is Phoenix, whose abilities include a self-revive, so he gets a second wind. Um, so if you get knocked out, when you get killed in this game, you don't die immediately. Unless you've been revived once before or something happens to you that's catastrophic. Uh, you usually are downed for a period of time. You can be revived. And you can be revived by anybody. It doesn't have to be a medic, but medical abilities uh, do allow you to revive a lot faster and with more health, I believe. So um, what Phoenix can do is he can actually revive himself. Uh, but in addition, he also has a defibrillator, which allows him to uh, melee teammates that are downed and revive them. And he has a quick pulse ability, which allows you to fire out a quick sort of pulse beam uh, in your general area to heal your teammates, which is very quick, uh, but it doesn't do a hell of a lot. So he's not the best medic, but he's kind of your burst heal type medic. And then you've got uh, Aura who has a healing station and a defibrillator, so she's your basic medic. And all of them have uh, different loadouts. So the loadouts are look something like this. They're all different cards, and they all contain different types of weapons. And uh, they also have different perks. So Phoenix, who I've got a Cobalt level card, which is the highest rarity. They all have different rarities, which you can combine and trade up to higher levels. Um, it's got an automatic sort of uh, carbine. This AK style rifle. They do, they all are modeled on real world weapons, but they just sort of have odd names. So the Krotzny is essentially an AKS 74, uh, and we've got a Beretta M9 down here, and we've got a cricket bat, which is our melee weapon, and you can quick melee uh, people as well. Uh, so his uh, perks on this card here. He has Get Up, which get, increases the amount of health he gets when he revives. Double Time means he can reload while sprinting, which is very good when using a weapon like this. And you have an increased amount of ammo as well, so you get one more magazine uh, for each weapon. So you have a little bit more ammo. Ammo is another thing uh, as well, like unlike games like Overwatch, so if you watch me for, for the Overwatch games, you'll notice that, yeah, Overwatch, you don't really have an ammo limit. Uh, this game does, so you do actually have characters that are able to give ammo to other team uh, teammates as well. And I've got a whole bunch of cards as well for others, so you can see like Nader here. This card allows her to have an SMG, but she also has increased melee damage and reduces damage from explosives. And in this one then she has the Krotzny as well, so she's got a different variant of the Krotzny as well. So it's, they all have different sort of stats and you... You get all these cards from opening these cases. So this is a case right here that I can just open right now to give you an idea. Uh, and they give you different amounts of rarity. You get a certain chance of getting a certain card. So it shuffles through the deck. Uh, you can skip this animation if you want. It does look a little bit janky for some reason. Uh, we got an arty, a bronze arty card. So arty is another character. Uh, and you do have to unlock that character to be able to use the card, but we've got that bronze card there. We can have a look at the stats. So he has, you can see the lock up here. I haven't unlocked this character yet. Uh, I'll get onto that in a second. And uh, yeah, you've got a whole bunch of stats uh, for each weapon. You've got the the uh, perks as well. So that's all well and good. And uh, this is another equipment case. Now, one thing about unlocking mercs and things is, or characters, 
as they all cost a certain amount of credits. This is the in-game currency, which you can see up here. So this costs 50,000, which is a fair amount. And... Or you can unlock it straight up for ten dollars. That's a lot of money. Ten dollars per character is a lot of money. You can go to the store and get bundles. So they do have bundles available, which will give you a bunch of characters. But even that is about well at the moment it's fifty percent off. But that's sixteen dollars for three characters. That's a fair price for what it is. I would say, but when you get to without the fifty percent off, then. Uh, they are quite expensive on their own. Like, look at this. Thunder over here is one of the featured mercs. Uh, we can actually have a look at him. And he's going to cost $10 to unlock as well. And that's a lot of money. Right. So, now that we've talked about that, let's get on with the actual gameplay. So, let's hit the play button here and go to quick join. And, uh... These are the different modes that unlock. This will unlock when we reach level 6. So I'm pretty close to there. Uh, this is a totally different type of game mode. This is uh, a game mode where you have to complete the objectives in a certain amount of time and then you switch teams and whoever has a better time at completing the objectives is the winner. Uh, objective mode of course uh, the you have to complete the objectives and you have a time limit instead. An execution mode is there's no there's no respawns so it's kind of a last man standing type thing so either you plant the bomb or you um, uh, or you kill the other team. So kind of like Counter-Strike in a way. It's a bit like Counter-Strike. Yeah, uh, the bomb defusal mode is very much like that. Alright, so we're going to go into objective mode, and let's see if we can find a match. Alright, here we go, and uh, we've got... We've got our, our squad here, and this we can switch characters in the match, but only from these three. So we can switch mercs by hitting this button here. And it'll give us all the mercs that we can choose from, or we can just change the loadout card. I'm going to go with this, so I can show you uh, Phoenix. Defend the objective. Don't let them plant C4. I believe we might have joined a match that's already underway, but hopefully I can still show you how the game plays out. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right loadout selected. There we go. Yep, this is the right one. So we're currently playing as Phoenix, and you can see our abilities there on the right, all bound to QE... Uh, and there would be another one as well, but that's a context action, which means uh, the self-revive is only active when we're actually downed. And all these abilities have cooldowns as well, so if I just hit the healing pulse now, you can see it's got a five second cooldown. Alright, I think somebody's being down here. Right, we're down here, I'm going to quickly self-revive. Just kind of show you guys what this does. Right, so this game does have aim down sights. But it's not really intended to be played that way. Wow, these guys are good. Uh, the aim down sights doesn't actually change your... It doesn't really change your uh, uh, accuracy in any way. But it does give you a slight zoom. So if you want to use it, you can. There's also a sprint. And you can see our self-revive there is on cooldown. I believe it's 45 seconds or something along the lines of that. So it's pretty long. So you do have to be very careful how you use abilities like that. Uh, not all of them are as punishing as this one, though. Alright, I think that person's been downed. Oh, somebody just threw a grenade. There they are. Alright, we want to finish them off. So that they can't revive. Okay, that's an ammo station. We're just going to heal here. Our teammates do need a bit of healing as well. Uh, that's an incendiary grenade. <laughs> kind of forcing everybody into the corner here like this. Okay, so just a bunch of heals there. I'm just going to keep using it because we can heal ourselves with it too, uh, which is very useful. Let's just get around here. Guy's trying to revive his teammate. And smack. There we go. Alright, we got a revive there. That's very good. Now, the game's time to kill is actually very, very short. So, you might recognize this from games such as uh, Counter Strike being the closest to that. It's not as fast as that, but it's certainly. 
quite severe. <laughs> I might have noticed there, there was a little shield icon. That means uh, the spawn area, we have 100% more uh, armor. You can still be killed in the spawn area, and it is possible to spawn camp, but it normally doesn't happen as often. Uh, because it's just so much harder to do it. Oh, we revived her and she got killed anyway. Yeah, there is a sniper up there, which is going to really hurt us. You get this nice little ghost here that shows us what happened as we died. And it looks like we're doing a little bit of a jig there, which is kind of funny. Thank you. All right, let's heal up everybody. All right. I do want to push forward, but it is a little bit hard with that sniper locking us down. All right, that one's down. So yeah, you have to be very careful about finishing off people that are on the ground because they can be revived and you really don't want them to be coming back. Okay, so there's a bunch of them over there, but that doesn't mean there isn't any up here. Yep. Oh, and he got me. <laughs> I could have actually pulled my cricket bat out, because that is actually very useful. Interestingly, in this game, if you sprint with a melee weapon out, you go faster. Or at least it seems like you are. You might actually be going marginally faster. Which is a very old school FPS thing. For sure. Well, I revived somebody, and he died. <laughs> Such is the way of things. Okay. So yeah, they're really pushing us back. This is the objective up here. So this is one of those maps with multi-stage objectives. Um, so basically they have to push through the map. Kind of like, um, I think, rush mode in Battlefield. Pretty similar to that in that sense. All right, I'm going to try and get the revive here. Nope. Run away. Run away. Oh, and that guy died. Oh, well. I was going to try, but you do have health regen. Um, that is a thing, but it's not very fast, and relying on it is yeah. I'm gonna try and uh, defuse it. I don't know why I did that. Let's defuse it. Alright, so now we just got to defend over here. Let's heal the team. Alright, so that C4 is disarmed. Alright, let's try and get to you. There we go. Alright, so there's some green fire on that uh, staircase over there. I believe that's one of the abilities of my teammates, but, oops, I keep using the defibrillator when I don't mean to. Alright, so we are stacked up at this uh, staircase quite badly now. So, let's just get some shots off in that direction. That is a sniper up there. So I'm really outgunned when it comes to that. So yeah, the, all the different classes really make a difference. You really want to make sure that you've got the right loadout for the job. And that's one of the, the main issues with, with a loadout system, which I I don't necessarily see as a problem per se. It's more of um, it's it's one of those things that you can screw up quite badly if you don't know the maps. So for example, if you don't know the approximate ranges of things or... Um, if you don't understand the maps well enough, or, or even how to use the maps to your advantage, then you you can end up with loadouts that are not as useful. There isn't a loadout that is completely useless, as far as I can tell yet. Uh, there, there just isn't one. Is anyone going to help me up? Or now I can self revive. Got to get to it before. Uh, let's get you. Oh, 
There we go, finished them off. Pistols are actually really powerful in this game. They're a lot more powerful than you would expect, but the enemies do feel a little bit bullet spongy. So, uh... It doesn't seem like you're doing a lot at first, but you land... If you land some really accurate shots, especially headshots, you can do some serious damage with them. So, yeah, there really isn't a completely useless loadout, I would say. Uh, shotguns might seem a bit difficult to use at first. Oh, he finished me. But uh, even they have their uses, especially on maps like this. A lot of the maps are very urban, very... Um, they have indoor areas. So you end up having uh, situations where you can make use of short-range weapons like that. There are machine pistols and all that as well, so they can come in very handy. Uh, let's finish them off. Somebody's defusing, there we go. Just another healing pulse out. But yeah, I don't really find uh, loadouts to be that useless. Even the lower rarity, the main difference appears to be things like weapon skins. Uh, so you get do get some nice cosmetics. Like this um, particular uh, Krotzny I'm using is not the same one that I have on Nader, even. Like, it's it's not even the same. Uh, they have basically the same stats, but this one has a nice little sort of Stars and Stripes skin going on, which is kind of cool. Go, go. Oh, I got stuck on the edge of the thing. <laughs> I thought I could be a bit sneaky there. Right, so... Yeah, the the loadouts will include things like assault rifles and carbines and machine pistols, SMGs, everything. And for the most part, they seem to complement the loadout that you're picking anyway. Uh, if you're going with a very fast uh, character such as Prox, uh, which is the one that you just saw getting killed there, uh, you can actually make use of her weapons because she has... Uh, an SMG, I believe, on one of the loadouts, and a and uh, a shotgun. So because she's so fast, uh, she can actually be very, very useful at uh, at short range, which is where she excels at anyway. So you, you do get those sorts of loadouts. You don't really get loadouts that would force you to play in a style that your character is not intended for. That just doesn't really happen. Alright, we really need help here, so I'm going to self-revive. I find it very useful that you can still see what's going on even if you've been downed. Like, it doesn't stop you from seeing that. I know a few games in the past, uh, some really old Half-Life games as well, that, that used to do that. Uh, so if you were to revive or something like that, you'd be thrown into a situation you're not fully aware of. Uh, and this doesn't happen here. You it, you get this sort of black and white effect, but you can still see what's going on. So using a, an ability like a self-revive is still useful. You, you can still see whether or not that's going to get you killed. So yeah, here I don't have my self-revive, but somebody is able to revive me. But they're not a medic, so it's even harder for them to do it. Uh, and I died. Uh, that uh, grenade uh, hit me, that killed me. Oh, this guy's in an interesting spot. So you can see here he's got an AK. This is an uh, assault rifle. And over here we've got another one that's down. We've got a sniper over here. He's going to go for the finish there. It's always recommended... Uh, oh, this is a burst fire assault rifle as well. It's always recommended that you have... Um, uh, you, you use your melee weapon for finishes uh, wherever possible because uh, ammo can be a bit scarce. Alright, let's 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 stop spectating there and finish the game. Yeah, this is going to be a fairly long video, I think, because I do want to show off an entire round. Even if this isn't an entire round, this is kind of going on a while now. <laughs> uh... Alright, do I want to go for the revive here? Yes, I do. I definitely do. Okay, go! <laughs> and we won. So, uh, that's about a thousand currency per match, which is not bad. It's not bad, and I think we got something out of that as well. 
Yeah, we've got another equipment case. So, hey, case openings. Now, that's something I wanted to show before, and I completely forgot about it. You do get to see the percentage chance of everything. So, earlier we got a bronze, which is actually close to the middle, uh, and cobalt is the highest. But, uh, the top of actual, um, in terms of actual loadouts is actually bronze, because beyond that, it's all cosmetics. That's pretty much it. So getting a bronze card is actually what you're looking for. A bronze has three perks, and that's the maximum you'll get. The only variation beyond that will be the weapon type, but there is actually no difference in power between bronze, gold, silver, and cobalt. It is really just cosmetic. So uh, let's just open this up and see what we get. Oh, just missed the gold one. Yes. Oh, just missed a proxy gold. Ah, that would have been nice to have. But oh, a fragger card is good too, even if this isn't particularly fantastic. It's a lead card. But we can always trade these up as well. Uh, let's have a look here. So you can actually craft new loadout cards from what they call fragments. This works similar to dust and things in Hearthstone, where you recycle cards for fragments, and then you can... Uh... In fact, let's do that one of that now. Uh, let's sort by recycling the lead cards. So there we go, we've recycled all our lead cards. And let's go back to crafting. And we can select a merc that we want to craft for. Now, I particularly like Phoenix, but I do need a new one for Nader as well. Or I could go for Fletcher. Fletcher is another character that is kind of fun to play. Uh, so this is the approximate cost for that. So we're a little bit short of getting a bronze card, but we can craft an iron one pretty much immediately. So you can see just how this kind of goes. If I was to recycle another iron card, I can pretty much get a bronze already. And of course, crafting a cobalt will take a really long time uh, with 20,000 fragments. So that sort of stuff isn't really worth it, but it is kind of worth it to get rid of the cards that aren't really that useful. Uh, you get default cards as well, which come with the basic equipment, but no perks. And this is just, if you have the Merc and you haven't got any cards yet, this is what you use. Essentially, you can't recycle these, and they're not really used for anything beyond that. So, yeah, that's just a quick look at Dirty Bomb. Of course, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. This is a game that I find particularly interesting, because it's something I dive in and out of pretty frequently. Uh, it's kind of a... I find it's, it's a, a fairly hardcore FPS. Kill times are fairly quick compared to a lot of games nowadays. But generally, it's not a game that is too punishing on new players. And definitely, there isn't really much of a power creep or anything like that going on. Uh, there isn't that much in the way of uh, superiority for pa for characters who, or rather for players who have played longer than others. There really isn't much in the way of that. So you can kind of see how uh, how the free-to-play aspects kind of work out. And I find this is probably one of the more balanced ones. It's just that maybe the characters are a little bit too expensive. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is this something that interests you guys? Do you want to see more of this? And uh, do you play any other free-to-play FPS or shooters? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I know there are a fair few out there and I'm probably going to be co covering them in the coming weeks. Uh, so let me know what you guys play and uh, let me know what you guys would like to see as well. Uh, if I do actually play those games, I'll probably be putting them on the channel anyway. And uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.